cohesive zone modeling is uh, is definitely a pretty hot topic, and really I feel a key enabler for a lot of composite analysis. It allows users to uh, basically model delamination, initiation, and propagation of uh, adhesively bonded structures. So it allows you to answer questions such as you know, uh, how fast will my crack grow? Is my crack going to reach a, a critical length? Um, what type of loads are going to cause my crack to grow in my particular structure? And the way the input works is we're basically putting this on our contact definition. So on our contact definition, you would choose CZM for cohesive zone model. You know, and then you're basically defining after that allowable stresses and allowable displacements. And there's two components to them, the uh, tensile component and the shear component. And basically to, uh, to model the, the mode one crack growth and the mode two crack growth, all these values here are just to define this. It's basically a, a classic triangular traction separation law. Uh, so for the adhesive, it basically the local failures are governed by uh, this traction separation curve. The bottom here is basically displacements, and then uh, the top here is uh, interfacial stresses. So at these local regions, basically what will happen is the stresses will build up as it reaches a, a, a peak interfacial strength allowable. Uh, once it hits that, the adhesive in that region will start to soften. It will continue to soften until it, it reaches um, what we call a, a final interfacial allowable displacement. And at that point, the bond completely fails in that location, and then the structure is able to pull apart. So one particular validation we ran is a mode one fracture test for a carbon fiber double cannon levered beam. And so what we're doing with this one is pulling apart the ends of this uh, double cantilever beam. So, so the top portion is pulled up, the bottom portion of the double cantilever beam is pulled down, and what will happen is the debonding will initiate in the, uh, the front of the specimen and then propagate through the length of this entire DCB. And since we're using an enforced displacement, more of the cracks grow, um, the less load is required to peel the rest of the structure apart. And at the NEI national results follow the displacement response pretty closely and is very close to the experimental results that are obtained from the literature.